Welcome back to Bonanza Disc Golf. We have a conspiracy-ish thing that we need to talk about, which honestly isn't a conspiracy because EVP is secretly selling discs for like $12 premium plastic on Amazon. Big shout out Medina Disc Golf page, which is actually funny because I grew up in Brexville, Robbie Heights in Cleveland, Ohio, but they kind of tipped me off to this. But these are the discs that MVP is secretly selling. And I'm pretty sure most of them are either Thought Space, Streamline, or Mint Mold. And I have a good idea with the help of my buddy, Caden, what most of these might be, but I'm gonna need some of your help in the comments. But you know who's not secretly selling MVP discs? Me. If you wanna check out BonanzaDiscGolf.com, I just got a restock of a ton of Fission Hexes, Fission Insanities, Fission Envies, and a bunch of other really cool stuff down on the link in the description. If you want the most direct way to support me and get some really cool shattered van stamp, either money foil or assorted rainbow foil discs, as well as some of the old stuff which is on sale, it means a lot to me if you wanted to pick some of that up. It's stupid windy right now, but it should be up in about an hour. So we're gonna take a look at these seven discs. I bought all of them on Amazon for like $85 total. I'm gonna go get some food and then we'll come back. Okay, so I didn't stop for food, but let's talk about this craziness because I don't, let's just go to Amazon real fast. I don't quite know why this is like quote unquote hidden because if we look up remix discs, honestly, this is interesting. First off, sponsored are remix discs baskets, which just look, this one just looks like an MVP black hole light which is like the practice basket that I use. But then over here, we have sponsored MVP discs, sponsored MVP discs. And then we finally get to the remix stuff. Super interesting that MVP is running ads against remix disc as a keyword. But if we click into any of these, we have the behemoth, this three disc starter set. Also prices crazy, $12 for this sport plastic, quote unquote, which is their premium plastic. Baseline is only $9.95. We go over to the behemoth, which I bought the glow one of. You can see that you can get the glow in for $12.95. So add an extra dollar for the glow. Don't exactly know why, but the real interesting part of this is is it just looks like remix disc golf. But when you click into this listing here and you go to who is actually selling it, which you can see by right here, it's shipped from Amazon, but it's sold by disc golf goods. You would think this would just say MVP disc sports. I don't understand why it doesn't say that because you click into it and you can scroll down to the bottom here, detailed seller information. It's just MVC, MVP Pro Shop LLC in Michigan, which is where they're based. Very confusing why they don't just have this be MVP, but if you go to this storefront, it's literally all MVP disc sports, MVP disc sports, all the MVP bags, remix disc golf bags, the lights, like 13 pages of things that are MVP and remix disc sports. This is after I shot this whole video, and I think, honestly, I came to a conclusion that makes a lot of sense as to what's actually happening here, but we're gonna go out through my ideation process as we figure out these discs uh, in the, in that just the best conditions in the world. The disc golf was a lot of fun though, and better than I anticipated, so let's get to the course. Did the wind die down? Nope, but well, we're gonna go play some disc golf. Yeah, baby. We're gonna play one through nine and then 15 through 18. I'll tell you my hypothesis for what a lot of these discs are as we throw them a bit. All right, hole one, 355, kind of a ripping tailwind. And I think we're gonna go with the Spartan because it's a tailwind. Now, we are thinking this might be like a streamlined lift. It kind of feels like an 11 speed. They call it a distance driver, 174 max weight, OB along this road all over here. So, wow, this is such a big tailwind. Oh, it did not flip a single bit. That is a putt though. Woo. That one seems like it'll be a little flippy, but in that tailwind, just kind of held straight. It was nice that it did not dump at all. And it gave us a 30 foot look. Tried to throw it a little high, but just everything is getting smacked. This is the Eldritch putter. I got it in the base plastic because it's gonna be my putting one. This is like a bullet from Mint Discs. A little shallow. I don't know if mints are made by MVP. It 100% seems like it, but I think they have like some NDA or something. Oh my gosh, that was psycho. This feels a little light, but it's a 175. Yes, oh, that's scary. So initially the weather, it said that it was supposed to get less windy. And then I just looked at it before I came back here and it's just gonna get windier the whole day. Straight ahead, 314. You can see it's ripping up from the left to the right. Since we're going downhill, I think it could be mid. I think we're gonna throw the torpedo. Now my buddy Caden was convinced that this is a Mintis Mustang. Feels very similar, he said. Nice, shallow, slightly overstable mid-range. Should I throw a driver? We're gonna throw the Ronin. Now, I don't know what this disc is. This could be a Votum, but it's a little domey. Also could be a Grackle, maybe? Or it just could be something different. Like, maybe these are not actually other molds, but a little seven speed. Oh, no! Well, I got beat down. I'd also love to know if you know more about these companies, like you think these are not the molds that I think or whatever. This could be a Juggernaut, which he thought was a profit from into slightly beaded putter. We really just want to put this under the basket. Keep it under the wind. Oh, what a skip! That was so lucky. Yes. Oh, baby, pars are good. If I get a birdie in this wind, 
I'm gonna be so stoked. All right, hole three is a tough par four, not because of distance, but because of wind. Look at how tight that OB gets. The green, it's 21 feet across, 510 feet down there. Luckily, it is a par four. Man, this wind makes me want to throw a forehand, but I feel like it's just gonna get smacked down against it because it's coming up now very much right to left. The behemoth honestly feels like kind of destroyer-esque, which would make me think it's either a goat for mint discs, similar, or a synapse from Thought Space. See, and that normally is going so far out of balance to the right, but that wind just kept it so straight. All right, basket straight there. Honestly, because of this wind, we could try to chip up a forehand there, maybe with something like the battleship, because it seems, I don't know what this disc is. This is the one I don't know. It seems like a more overstable version of this. Caden, when I was playing with him earlier, was saying that when it gets super windy, the play is just try to throw it in, and when it goes out of bounds by the basket, you take your par. Just behemoth again. All right, I should give us like a 15, 20 footer. That's such a dumb play, but I love it. All right, I definitely wanna make sure that I'm like not taking it too close. I'm gonna see where this landed. So it landed past the basket. Take our meter in. Oh, this, shoot, this is my least favorite putt too, cause we're going right to left. Oh, that's so rude. All of these chains, and cut all the way through. Oh, that was a fun play though. That's so dumb, that's such a crazy play. All right, hole four, 260, uphill. Honestly, wind feels like it's dying a bit. Nope, no, it's back. I shouldn't have said anything. Tailwind, I think we're gonna try to throw this battleship. Just kind of slight Anheuser right at it, let the tailwind push it up the hill and stable it out. <sighs> yes. Oh, what the roll, what was that roll? I landed it 10 feet from the basket, and I think I have a 40 footer. Honestly, the play is a layup, 100%. Wow. A bogey because of a botched layup. Wow. All right, our basket is 342 up to the left. Uphill kind of a pump. We do have a tailwind slightly left to right. So it's gonna be an interesting little nose angle to get this shot up there all the way. I'm kind of between the Spartan and the Behemoth. I think the Behemoth might be too stable. Definitely feels slower. It definitely feels like a 10 or 11 speed, whereas the Behemoth feels like a 12 or 13 speed. If it doesn't roll, that's actually probably pretty good. Yeah, that might be like a lift or a jet or something. Pretty, I don't know if it's streamlined, but one of my theories I have, which obviously this is 100,000% speculation, but I'm wondering, honestly, why MVP is choosing to do this? It seems kind of random, but maybe they have like new plastics that they're testing out. This is like how their test molds or older molds from these discs. Or maybe they just want more useful life than what Mint and ThoughtSpace are giving them in terms of orders. Like maybe Mint and ThoughtSpace aren't selling as much as MVP wants them to, and they wanna make more use of the molds that they have. But that would probably have to mean that MVP owns the molds and licenses the molds. I used to sell on Amazon. The money that they're making on these discs is very minuscule. Maybe 40 to 60% of whatever is sold on Amazon is Amazon's fees and such. MVP might be grossing four to $7 of revenue which is not a lot at all. So honestly, kind of confusing, but oh, we kind of got to look. It's my least favorite type of putt again, but we made it up here at least. Wind is down. No! Oh, we should be able to birdie this next. I think one of my questions is like, why is MVP hiding this? You have to go through that whole, looking at the seller profile, going into like the whole information, finding out that the business actually is MVP. It's so interesting that they hide that um, cause they have like also like baskets and bags and stuff that are made. And maybe it's just trying to capitalize on the cheaper market on Amazon and not leaving any marketplace unturned. Cause they also sell on Amazon just their own discs. It could be for people who are getting into disc golf to feel this plastic, but then they wouldn't know that it's MVP. So like if they're beginner sets, get in the $30 really cheap beginner set. It doesn't seem like they're getting a lot of like repeat business after that. So it just seems like an interesting move that I don't quite understand, but I don't have to. I'm not the one who's doing it. It honestly seems like too much work went into this for it to kind of be an afterthought. So it's gotta be some part of like a plan. All right, hole 10, 483, downhill, OB five feet past the basket. Headwind, right to left. So leave something way wide, let it drift back. Kind of probably just gonna be behemoth. It's launched, it's pin high, but it's way left. All right, this was not the worst shot in the world. Into a headwind, OB just to the left. Kinda wanna jump putt it up, but not into a headwind, I suck at that. Maybe a little forehand with the battleship. Whew. Wasn't supposed to be a run, but it just lifted up. We're only two up. That's not terrible in this wind. 
Yeah, great putt. All right, hole eight, dead ahead, 304 feet, definitely putter shot. I think we're gonna go juggernaut though, because it's tailwind and slightly less stable, so we can give it a little baby flex at the basket. There's OB three feet past the basket, and this whole road that winds up there is also OB, so it plays an island. You have to re if you don't make it over. Gonna try to throw it a little bit touchy, but honestly, if I juice it, as long as I'm by the basket and I can make the comebacker for par, I'm not mad about it. Yeah, that's a much better play. Gonna skip right up there and give me a 15 footer. Let's go. Yeah, buddy. You know what, I think I just thought of potentially the reason for this company. I wonder, these feel very reminiscent of a lot of discs that I've thrown before, but slightly different. A very domey Voda, like it's definitely not a Grackle, it seems more like a Voda. It seems like a little shallower than the bullet. I'm wondering if these discs are all pre-manufacture molds, where they make the molds and they're like, okay, we think this is what it's gonna be. They make it, it's a good disc, but it's not exactly what they want. Like this is slightly less stable than they want, or this is slightly dope. I don't know exactly what it is, but maybe these are molds that didn't quite make the cut for MVP, Thought Space, Mint, Jester, whoever else gets their stuff through them, Streamline. And these are just molds that are good. You can sell discs with them. How much is it to make a mold? Five, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars. It's in the thousands though. And that's a lot of potentially wasted money and energy for what could be a good disc, just not quite what you'd want. So maybe these are all basically factory second molds. Honestly, I think that makes the most sense of anything that I've thought of because it wouldn't make sense for them to like just have another mold that they're just rebranding and selling under this name. That doesn't really make a lot of sense, but it does make sense that in the ideation and in the prototyping process that you create a good disc that isn't quite what you want and you'd still be able to sell it through these. I might've just cracked the code. Maybe that's dumb, but I, I, it seems like it seems like it'd be right, right? Behemoth here, that seems like a little faster than a synapse. Um, straight headwind, 610 feet, down the hill. Gonna try to bomb it, keep it right side. <clears throat> that disc is stable. Definitely like a synapse. Wow, I thought I burned it. It's gonna be a very far up shot. I think too, if I'm right, which is obviously a very big if, that might mean that MVP retains the ownership of all of the molds from Thought Space, Mint, or whoever, and they license the use of that mold exclusively to this company for this period of time. Maybe perpetuity, that wouldn't make as much sense, but that makes sense from a perspective of these startup companies don't have the capital to just spend on molding. MVP does. So if they're able to make the molds and then license them to these companies, retaining a little bit more of the profits of each of their sales, that would make a lot of sense because then if they make a mold and TSA or whoever is just like, no, this isn't perfect. We don't like this exactly. Maybe they go back to the drawing board. They start manufacturing that disc because it's still a good disc and it still like meets all of their quality control, but they just put it into Remix. So I wouldn't be surprised if as TSA and Mint continue to fill out their lineup, if we see more Remix discs pop up because maybe they're not exactly what those companies want. Not if you don't throw it to the right, dude. I throw it so straight. Knew it out of my hands, never got it high enough. Ay, 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 ay. All right, hole 15, 255, straight down there. Into a headwind, I think it's a forehand or a little backhand turnover with the juggernaut. Oh, that's very, wow, what, huh? I really thought the wind would flip it. All right, hole 16, it's 300 feet straight ahead of us, about 35 feet past that tree. We do have a slight head. I think honestly, this could be a good shot for a torpedo. It's been less stable than I thought that a Mustang would be, which is why I don't think it's that, which is why I think it's like a factory second molding. So a little bit of hyzer towards this left side of the gap, I think will flip up and ride straight, but have the stability to like stay on this line. Honestly, this might be a, just a soft little shot with the Ronin instead. That's perfect. Skip in. Oh, that's so good. It's definitely short, but. Oh baby, both plays are beauteous. Holy crap. Let's go. Oh my gosh, it almost did it again. It almost spat right back that outside. Oh. All right, OB just to the right of the basket, 253 with the 45 foot downhill drop zone. The wind is pushing headwind left to right. This wind makes it very, very difficult. But I think the play is a stable putter like this juggernaut, which is way more stable than I thought. Put it on Anheuser, because it's going to drift with that wind, but fight against it the whole time. So it'll get back to flat. That thing is crazy stable. Wow. I mean, that's gonna be basically a pitch up for a par. I might run it actually, cause it's gonna be a tailwind, but wow. All right, try a torpedo. A little flatter. Oh yeah, look at that wind. That's actually gonna be in the basket though. See, that also might be OB, but that also could be really good. Well, it looks like I might've been wrong about the play. 
You guys think I should just lie to you and tell you that this torpedo is my first shot? Be like, oh look, he's a birdie, woo. Zoik, Eldritch. It's very stable, wow. That was, we're not on par with that. Holy cow. All right, so since there's nothing on the line, we're for sure running this. Oh, great height. From the top of this? I don't know, it's like a tapman basically for bogey. That was close though. Really almost had that. So, show stayed in. We shot basically even, cause that last little one we could've just pitched up, but we'll take the bogey. Kinda crazy that all this is like $85 and it's MVP plastic. If anyone has any better theories about what's going on, I would love to read about them in the comments. Like I'll definitely be reading all these comments. This is so interesting, especially what the battleship is. I don't really know. All of these molds are like not bad, but I definitely think that they're not the exact same as the ones that we've seen before. My discs are linked down below. It means a lot to me if you pick those up. I appreciate you guys so much for watching this video. Hopefully there's some new people who made it to the end. Uh, if you wanna subscribe, that means a lot. I make videos basically every day and I have a massive back catalog if you want to watch through. If you want a video, it's also me just talking about a contemporary topic, especially with Gannon just winning from the chase card. Check out this video, which is about if Jomas is going to be the same as we know it soon. Check that out right down there. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one tomorrow, more than likely. Wind is crazy and silly and dumb, but kind of also fun. Okay, love you, bye.